Oh, hi. Where'd you come from? I didn't know you were watching. You're always watching. What up to the replay viewers? I like you watching them replays. Let them know we real about this stuff. And shout out to my live viewers. Hmm, let's see here. What's up, Dad's Capricorn? Hope you're having a good day. What up, what up, what up? Maxine, how are you? Happy Sunday to you. About to give a call to this guy. A pre-foreclosure in bankruptcy and the house needs work. So, you know, problem central. About to see if we can create a deal. Create something from nothing. I say it's a full gut, but I don't, it doesn't look like that to me, but. They think he owes about 95000 on it. Uh, we think the ARV is about $180,000. Um, it's supposed to be a three-bedroom, one-bath, and it's supposed to need about $7,700 in reinstatement amount. $995 a month, PITI, principal interest, taxes, and insurance. That's the information I have right now, but I'm about to verify some of it with the seller because I got this from somebody else. And uh, if you know somebody that might want to learn some of this stuff, Hit that little share button right up in there. Hit the share to other people who might care. So let's see if we can get him on the phone and do something with this. Mr. Sam the man. Sam man. Nevertheless, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? This is the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke. And don't forget, tomorrow night, Monday night, we're going live on the YouTube channel and on Facebook in the group, the Woke Real Estate Investors Group. So let's see if we can get him on the line here. Like and share if you care. One to connect to three. Here we go. Hello. Hi. Yes. Can I speak to Sam? Hi, Sam. My name is Chris. Uh, you were talking to uh, my, one of my partners in regards to your house on Humphrey. How are you today? I'm doing fine, and you? Good, good. Did I catch you at a good time? Oh, uh, I can talk. Okay, great, great. So um, I was just looking over some of the information here on your house here, and uh, it looks like it needs a little bit of work. He said something about there's something going on with the tree that's messing up the foundation or something like that. Right. So is it just a, gr a tree growing out of the ground, or what's the deal there? Well, the tree has been there for years, so the roots is probably, you know, I don't think it's the foundation. I just think it's the tree that needs to be removed, and, and everything will probably settle back down once the roots is dead. But I'm not sure what's going on. You know, I'm not a uh, culture or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. So the found uh, so it needs to be that tree removed. Have you had somebody look at that before or not really? No, not really. No problem, no problem. So I I have to call my tree guy. You know, they charge a thousand dollars for any for just to look at a tree, I think. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, not really, but it it feels like it. It's never cheap. So nevertheless, um and so they were telling me that uh your loan is a little bit behind. About how much is it uh in arrears? About Three thousand. Eight thousand. Oh, about eight thousand. Okay. Yeah. And um, what is it that uh, made it kind of get behind? Uh, dealing uh, with Gerardo, like I'm dealing now, uh, we would have clones and dates, and then they will say, "Hey, this paperwork, you need that paperwork." And every time I think I have a clones and date, something else keeps. And uh, someone backs out of the deal or whatever, and I just got tired. I mean, I'm tired. I'm tired of it. Was from May to now. I'm still going through the same thing, and no one has closed on it. It just, it just got behind, and it's got behind to the point where it's foreclosure now. It was not never got in foreclosure. Just, you know, everything kept just couldn't kept getting set back. Right. And I just decided just to go on a, you know, move and or not move, but go stay with somebody until, you know, it. I'm I'm done. I'm done with everything. I mean, if it goes to foreclosure, if it goes, but 
Gerard is doing a good, very good job of trying to find some some people, whatever. He got this one guy that's looking at it, and the house has been in foreclosure for almost two weeks now. Um, and so the guy gave, asked me for some information about, uh, you know, the loan and everything and how much I owed on it or whatever. And then he, he calls, his name is Jack Brody. He calls and said, well, you know, we're working on it and trying to make sure we get this uh, pushed through. I don't, when I, you know, I, I know there are some problems with the house. It needs work or whatever. And that's why I'm getting out of it because I can't do it. I mean, it's just too much for me. And it's, it's like I can't deal with, with the just keep going and giving people the same information over and over and nothing's happening. Yeah. That can be a headache. I can definitely understand that. So what would be like the best case scenario for you? What would you like to happen? I would like for it to really be sold and for me not to get a lot, but just get some monies where I can try to get me an apartment or something like that. I'm, like, I'm staying with somebody right now, but just it don't seem like it's working out. Yeah. And how much is the uh, monthly payment on the house there? The monthly payment is no more than four hundred and twenty eight, but once you add the insurance and the uh the insurance and the taxes and it came out to eight hundred and some a month. So And that's because the taxes went up and I had a real high insurance. Yeah, they kinda get you when you got those homeowner policies. It's like that's who's making all the money, insurance and the bank, right? Right. So it's about eight ninety five a month, and then about how much did you still owe no, on not it? Even, not even eight. I owe um, with the late fees and all that, and I guess maybe they paid the taxes or whatever. Uh, eight, almost seven, eight thousand. That's the uh, re. They t told you that as a reinstatement amount. Yeah, it was a reinstatement amount. Uh, the whole amount is eighty four thousand, eighty five thousand. Okay, so 84 k is the total payoff of the loan. And so you were just trying to get a couple thousand or something like that at closing so you can move on with life? Right. Right, right. Okay, and so th is there stuff still in the house that you want to get out, like furniture and things like that, or is it stuff that you left behind you just he, don't want uh, anymore? Toronto told me just, he, he, they just leave everything in there and they just throw it away or whatever. Okay, so you got everything that you want out, though. Right. Okay, that's why I just want to make sure, because sometimes people leave back things that they want, family pictures and things like that. We don't want that stuff to get lost, because once they come start throwing stuff away, you'll never see it again. It's gone. Right. Right, right. So there's basically a, a couple of different options here um, that may work for this. Um, let's see here. So it just needs a little bit of work, and it looks like a little bit of cosmetic stuff. Is that correct? Right. And so... Uh, have you tried to do like a short sale or something like that on it, or what was it that you were trying to do before? Well, that's what he was. That's what uh, Gerardo was saying a short sale, but he said I wouldn't get anything out of it or anything like that. Or even uh, I'm not sure. He, I guess he don't know what the other Gerardo don't know, know what the other people are trying to do or what they're trying to pull or whatever. And maybe that's why he came to you to see about moving stuff a little bit more. I'm tired of every, I'm supposed to close this Friday. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I cannot do this anymore. And if it can't be closed or whatever, you know, or if no one is interested, you just let it foreclose and let somebody, you know, let everybody bid on who will want to bid. But right now, I'm not going to keep going through the, uh, the, the thing about closing and I, we can't do this. The buyer, he left and he didn't want to deal with it. Everybody wants to buy it, but I'm not sure what's going on at the end of the, you know, the sale or whatever. What's happening? You know, there are has so many people that are interested in it, but it seems like everybody backs out or they, they're, they're saying something different. And every time the closing time comes, closing saying, hey, we need this and we need that. And I'm constantly giving information and doing what I need to have done, but nothing is working out.
So I don't know what else to do, and I'm just tired. Yeah. It can definitely be an exhausting process. So it's definitely a lot. And so I wish you had brought me this. You said since then, May? You know, the, house is, the house is sitting up, and eventually, you know, there's no electric going on. There, I had the water cut off and everything. You know, I don't want those pipes to bust. Yeah. I don't want anything to happen. The gas lines are brand new. The, the box, the, uh, box in there is new. The, uh, Electrical box? Uh, 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 air conditioner. Everything is kind of, you know, a little bit up to date. So you did some work on it already. You updated some stuff on it. Yeah, a little bit. Not too much. It's just, I, 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 I'm done. I'm done. The, the, the furnace is about seven or eight years old. The, the air conditioning unit is about seven or eight years old. The roof is about, I don't even think it's 10 years old. It may be 10 years old. I'm not sure. Right, right. Because I got it in 2006. Mm. Oh, okay. 2007. So you had it about 12 years? Okay. And so you said they've been working on this deal, trying to figure it out since May? Yeah. Dang. I mean, he's been trying to find a seller. Gerardo's been trying to find someone to buy it. And every time I think we got to close in, like I said, it's just it's nothing falls through. Mm -hmm. Nothing falls through. And I'm tired. I'm, I'm, and I told him I was tired. You know, and I guess that's why he called you. I'm not sure how that's going to help me. Well, I wish he had called me back in May. We probably, probably could have had this wrapped up by now before it got way behind and all this other stuff. Because um, right. basically this is actually one of our specialties. We specialize in deals like this where we uh, work out things to where, you know, you can get something at closing and uh, we can actually get the house sold and off, you know, and done. So there's a couple of ways that we can actually help with this. One way, as you know, is a short sale, which uh, we have to get the approval from the bank to take a lesser payoff than what you actually owe on the property. I'm not sure if they'll accept that or not, but that is one option. A second option would be where we would take over the payments of the house, start making that uh, $800 or so a month payment for it. The loan will stay in your name temporarily for a period of time until we get it cashed out. We would try to get the work done on the house and get it back up to running condition and get it cashed out at a future date. And you would still get money, uh, you know, you would get something at closing with that. We can set it up to where you can actually get something to take home with. And not just give your house away back to the bank for no reason. We like to try to put money in people's pockets, you know, because you worked hard on your house and you should get everything you deserve, right? Right. Right. So that's basically uh, a couple of the options that we could do. And that's why I was just asking, you know, what would be the best case scenario for you? You just want to be done with the house and get you a couple of thousand at closing. Is that what I'm hearing? Right. Or we can go with, you know, uh, paying the bid, paying it, whatever. And I'm thinking that's what this other company is going to try to do. Because he asked me for the information. Get you one. Uh he asked me for the information, and I uh, gave him all the information that he needed, you know, like the uh, from Lakeview, the little form they give you about how much you owe and your other information on it and everything. Right, right. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, and it can be a lot. So that's why we just try to go ahead and, you know, move the process along and take all of that burden and stress off of your back so you, you don't have to worry about any of it. You know, there will be some paperwork that has to be done. Has they, uh, have you did any paperwork with anybody, such as a purchase agreement or anything like no, that? No, I have not. But Gerardo keep on having me sign contracts. I don't know how valid is those contracts when he gives them to me to sign because someone can say they had it first, you know. Yeah. So I'm not sure. You may need to talk to him about uh, what is going on. Oh. And I left everything in his hand, and I thought he was moving stuff along. And, and I think he's just the, the middle man. Yeah. Sometimes it can happen like that because it may be a deal that he can't handle right now. So he just try to get somebody who can handle it, somebody like us. So, um, like I say, this is what we specialize in. We do these types of deals all the time. Uh, it's just more so, you know, what you're comfortable with and what you want. And so we just try to make it a win-win situation well, so that you're happy. Not the short one, but the other one is more, sound like it would be more better. Yeah. So we would, uh, so in that case, we would have to, um, you know, bring along current. You said it's about $8,000. Uh, we would have to get you a few thousand, you know, to help you with moving or whatever your expenses are. 
um, and then we would actually pay the closing costs because you know there's going to be fees to transfer a title from uh, your name over to our uh, to our name. So uh, we would have to come out of pocket for you know a few thousand plus the repair amount as well. About how much do you think the house would take to be uh, as far as repairs? How much do you think it would take to get it up to standard? Well, it depends on how you guys want to go with it. Um, I would say almost about twenty to thirty thousand. Oh, okay, that's not bad. And it depends, and I mean, and, and most likely, if you guys do the work yourself, you can cut back on certain things. You know, it's just like any other house. You don't want you want to go behind the walls and check to see if the electrical is work. So you're going to put new drywalls up. You're going to put, you know, your own light fixtures. You know, you may already have, um, you may do light fixtures and plugs and things like that. And, you know, cabinets in the kitchen and pull up the carpet and make sure the floors are okay. Basement, you may want to seal it. Or then you may want to check the plumbing, you know, things like that to make sure everything, with that tree being out there, the tree is a problem with the, uh, the roots growing. So, so there is a plumber that I used to call every year to come and undo the drain. Mm, so they have to snake it every time? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they have to come get the roots out. And, I mean, and it lasts for about two years or whatever. But that tree is the problem. Mm, okay. All right. So, um... Yeah, we could take care of it. That's not a problem. It's, it's, I mean, it is a problem, but we can handle it. It's not something that's out of the ordinary. We come across all types of stuff on dealing with these houses, as you may know. Um, so let me ask you this. What are you going to do if you're not able to sell it? It's not going to foreclosure. Just going to let the bank take let it. Let them worry about it. Yeah. yeah. Have they given you a date or anything like that as far as a foreclosure date? Well, they just, it, well, they just said it's been... They uh, put in for foreclosure two weeks ago, so it, 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 they're getting ready to do something now. I'm not sure, unless the other company call them and, and, and tell them, hey, you know, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Okay. And has when was the last time a payment was made to them? The payment ain't made, been made to them since May. Okay. So it's been a few months, so that's why they probably are starting the process. Right. Okay. So, um, if I mean, you know, they sent me information if I wanted to, you know, try to hold on to, they would help me and give me time or whatever. And I just, I didn't, I really ignored the letters because I don't want to deal with it. Right, right. So, yeah, so I think we can work something out here, Sam. It just depends. Uh, I mean, if, if you want to work with us, we're, we're more than willing to work with you and try to help you resolve all of this and get this wrapped up. Is that something you'd be interested in? I'll be interested, but I still need to find out. Gerardo need to find out from that other guy what they're getting ready to do. Because he the one put me in contact with them, and he had me sign a contract. I don't want to be sued. Yeah, I understand that. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll check with them and see what the situation is with that. Plus, um, if we were to get one, we would do another document, too, that would just record it and show that we are the ones on contract to buy it. So it would protect you in the deal. So we do all of our deals. We close through a real estate attorney and or the title company here in St. Louis so that you're protected in the deal. We're protected in the deal and everything's legit and legal. So we don't have any stuff to come back later to haunt us. So we just try to do it everything, you know, clean from the very beginning. Uh-huh. So, so uh, how long does it take? Um, usually just a few days. Maybe I would say a few weeks, really. Two to three weeks normally on title work. Just well, That's what he's talking about, too, the, the other guy. So I don't know if you guys do the same thing or what. So what is it that they're trying to do? I mean, I mean, what kind of contract did they have I you signed? It sounds like, sound like they're trying to do the same thing you're trying to do. They had me to uh, write a letter and say why. I am trying to get rid of a hardship letter. Hardship and letter. They asked me, yeah. Yeah. And they had me to uh, give them the other information about the mortgage, the mortgage company was, how much I owe for it, and how much my payments were, and everything. Yeah. And that's basically, that's just basic work that we have to do just to get the process started. It's just basic paperwork. First of all, we have to agree on a purchase and sales agreement to say we agree to buy the house and you agree to sell us the house. 
the other part will be just getting the paperwork to show that, you know, so we can verify all of the information as far as the bank, how much is owed and all of that type of stuff. So once we get that stuff turned all in, uh, we send it into the title company. They do their magic to see if there's any other liens or surprises, you know, like MSD or any of these other people. They like to put liens on people's houses all the time. So they just about all that and once they finish all that and clean that up we know what we're buying we know that it's these are the issues with the title if there is any issues and we just buy the house if we just close on it we set a closing date and we buy it pretty much simple as that and like i said the only thing is the loan will stay in your name for a period of time but we will make those payments and catch that house I know that. payments up and stuff so as long as you're cool with all of that i think we can make all of this work out okay uh, but like i said you need to find out who these people are and what are they doing so you guys don't bump heads so like I said, you know, I don't need to be going through no, no, no legal right. stuff. I don't, I don't do legal stuff. So did, they, so did they have you sign a purchase and sales agreement or just the documents that you were talking about a second ago? Uh, Gerardo had me sign all that stuff and then give it back to him. Did it have a price on it like we're buying it for this amount of money? No. So that probably was just paperwork to figure out the loan. So I don't, he said that he didn't have you sign one, but I'll double check to make sure, you know, what paperwork they do have okay. and everything. Cause I'm, I'll probably will see him tomorrow, as a matter of fact, so we can get all this, try to move okay. this along quickly. I don't want to stretch this out any longer for you, cause it's been quite a while here. Um, so what I'll do, okay, um, well, I just want to have a few dollars for the holiday, man. I'm broke, man. I thought I was going to close Friday, and I said, oh man, I'm going to have some money for Christmas. I'm, I'm, I'm homeless, man, and, I'm, and I was betting on Gerardo to make something work for me. Mm. So I'm glad he reached out to me because, like I said, this is what I do. I solve the problem. We try to do whatever we can, to, you know, because there's going to be obstacles no matter what we do. We know that. It's just the nature of the game. But we have ways to try to. Well, all the obstacles know. should be gone now. All this should be about right now is, is it, they came up with the foreclosure. They, they put the foreclosure in, and I'm not sure. I'm why, how that's working out. Then you can't, Jace, you cannot have that. Well, which way are you trying to outfill away, baby? So do I'm you... I'm talking to my grandson. I'm with my daughter. No problem. Do you take text messages on this phone number here? Yes, I do. Okay. So, yeah. So let me double check with him and see what I, uh, what we can do. And uh, I'll text you what the next step is in the process. And then we can get this thing going here. Um, I just want to double check with him, make sure that they didn't have a purchase and sales agreement already done. Because if they don't, they don't really have okay. anything. They're just gathering information, which anybody can do. Just gather information to see about how much you owe on a loan and all of that type of stuff. Well, his phone number, I called there and they, and they got the guy's phone number. Because it's a 618 phone number. I'm like, you know, I said, that's not my phone number. So whoever, they're working real fast on it. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so long as, like I said, if they don't have a purchase and sales agreement, we'll get one in place and uh, start the process to get you uh, get you out, get you done with that house sooner rather than later. Other than that, did you have any okay. other questions for me before I let you go? No, I didn't. I'm just letting you know I can't keep going around in circles like this, man. I can't. I mean, it's to the point where I'm just giving up. Yeah. Well, don't give up yet. We'll just hold on a few more strings. We're going to pull through some kind of way. We're going to figure it out, all right? Okay. Sure. So, Thank so, you. So, yeah, so like I told you, my name is Chris with St. Louis Cash Bars. I'll be sending you a text here shortly with the next steps to do. Okay. All right, perfect. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, family, there you go. You got a motivated seller, highly motivated. This deal came across from a, a local wholesaler or slash investor here in St. Louis. They tried to work the deal, couldn't work the deal, sent it to somebody else. They couldn't work the deal. I'm like, why you just bring it to me, man? Bring me them deals, man. I saw a problem, man. Give me some problem to solve. What's up, Chris Haskins? I see you, bro. So, you know, when people come and they got problems, they need somebody to come along that can solve these problems. They said they had them have a, a hardship letter filled out. I'm going to need that, too. They already did, a, I guess, an authorization to release information. If they don't, I'm going to get one of those, too. Um, and so I'm going to text this seller and just tell him, uh, ask him, what's his email address? I always do it that way now. That's my new way of doing it. Send me your email address, and I'm going to send you what you need to, you know, fill out. I'll fill out the purchase and sales agreement, send it to him via DocuSign, and then I'll send him a separate email with that authorization to release information that he needs to fill on out and sign it with a wet signature and send it back to me so that I can get that into the bank so we can get this process started so I can verify 
because some of the information that the person gave me did not line up right. So looking at this, they told me they owe 95. That's what the guy told me, Gerard, or the person who sent the lead in. Uh, I talked to the seller. He said he owed 84 because that's the same thing I saw when I looked online. That's a big chunk. That's $11,000 difference, man. Don't be doing that. So verify all the information. So the seller kind of know what's going on. The person who sent it to me, he was off by some numbers by a little bit. And his payment amount was cheaper, too. So, you know, that's why I always got to ask the questions multiple times for multiple people. And then I go back, take those documents, send them into the bank, and then uh, try to find out if there's a way that I can uh, solve the problem for them. Any questions, comments, concerns before I get up out of here and do some more woke stuff? Let me go back here, see if it was some questions. Uh, a hardship letter. Is that unique to short sales? Um, I wouldn't say unique to short sales, but it is a requirement of short sales. You've got to have a hardship letter. Uh, you can have that hardship letter that just outlines why they didn't make their payments, why they fell behind, and they wish to sell this house, and uh, they just want to be out of it. And the way he's talking, if he's already completed a hardship letter, send me a copy of that. I'll turn it in as well if I'm going to do this as a short sale, which I'm probably not. Probably going to take this house over subject to. It's in a good area of St. Louis. Clean it up. Fix up the work that needs to be done there and uh, furnish that bad boy and use it as an Airbnb. It's almost close enough to be good enough for a wholesale deal. Because I was looking at the pictures of the house and the person was telling me that it needs about $60,000 in work. But from what I'm seeing, it looks like it needs about twenty to thirty, like the seller said. The seller seems to know what, more of what's going on than the person who sent the deal. So, you know, that's possible. It's not normal, but it's possible. So that's why I'm going to trust and verify all of this information and see what happens. Hope that helps you out. So you're doing a subject two. Yep, that's the plan to do it. She was motivated since May. Gerard out here messing around. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully you learned something here. Like I said, share this out if you can. Hit that little share button right there. Share it out on the on the universe. Help out some other people. If you're watching on the replay, like the video. And also subscribe to the YouTube channel at Chris Monroe STL. Uh, we're going to be going live the next Monday night, 7 o'clock Central Time. The next Monday's in a row. Tomorrow or Monday night. The uh, ninth will be on with uh, Mr. David uh, Randolph talking about short sales. Uh, the following Monday at the night, we'll be on with Loopy G out of Texas pushing the Lexus. And the following week, we'll be on with uh, Miss Danielle. She just closed her first wholesale deal for $12,000. We're going to talk about that and how I JV'd with her and helped her, you know, made a little bit of money. We all made some money. We had a $34,000 spread on that particular deal, but we'll be talking about that on the 20 whatever day of the week that is, two weeks from tomorrow. So that's how we're going to do it, family. Hope you all had a, having a good day. I'm about to get up out of here and do some more woke stuff. Follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. That's Snapchat, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's Facebook, that's YouTube. The YouTube popping. Do what you do. Be who you be, and I'll see you before you see me.